All right, we're gonna do this example problem right at the top of the page there. So a box of bananas weighing 40 newtons rests on a horizontal surface. The coefficient of static friction between the box and the surface is 0.4 and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2. If no horizontal force is applied to the box and the box is at rest, how large is the frictional force exerted on the box? All right, so what we need to remember here is that if we have a static friction situation, it's a range. That frictional force can be anywhere from zero up to a maximum mu sub s times normal force. If it is in motion, if those two surfaces are sliding, we have a kinetic friction problem and the coefficient of friction times the normal force tells me the force of friction and it's a constant value. So if my box is at rest, no sliding, that means I have a static friction. That means that number can be anywhere from zero to whatever mu sub s times normal force is. And so if I don't apply any forces to it, if I have my box sitting here and all there is is gravity and normal force, if there is no horizontal forces, there is no friction needed to stop it from moving. All right, so A, we come up with the idea that the force of friction is zero. Again, following with that range idea. For part B, it wants to know what is the magnitude of the frictional force the mo if a monkey applies a horizontal force of six newtons to the box that was initially at rest? So now, I don't know, is this a kinetic problem? Did the monkey actually get the box moving with that six newtons? Or was the monkey just applying a force like I'm applying a force to this table and it didn't start moving, so I have a static problem? All right, so what we need to know is we need to know what is this range, okay? So that range is gonna be anywhere from zero up to 0.4 times the normal force. All right, looking at my free body diagram here, I see the normal force is equal to the weight and the weight was 40 newtons. And so we have a range of zero to 16 newtons, meaning that if I apply one newton, the force of friction resists me with one newton. If I apply 10 newtons, it resists me with 10 newtons, all the way up to 16 newtons. And anything just barely over 16 newtons, it's going to start moving and it's gonna switch from a static to a kinetic friction problem. So six newtons is in my range, so that means that force of friction and that applied force are going to balance and it's not going to accelerate. And so for part B, Oops, for part B here, uh, we get an excel. We have a force of friction of six newtons. It balances. It's a static problem. For part C, what is the minimum horizontal force the monkey must apply to get the box in motion? They got to push at least 16 newtons. All right. So we got to get it up to 16 newtons. Anything over 16 newtons, and it is going to start accelerating. Part D says. What is the minimum horizontal force the monkey must apply to keep the box moving at a constant velocity? Constant velocity, so acceleration is zero. Once it is moving. All right, so now once I get it moving, my force of friction changes. So here it was zero to 16 newtons, and here it's 0.2, which was the coefficient of kinetic friction times my 40, so that is eight newtons. So once you get it moving, the friction drops. Okay, and so in part D, once they get it moving, to move it at a constant velocity, those forces again have to be balanced. So if friction's producing eight, the monkey has to produce eight to keep it moving at a constant velocity.